One farmer says, seems to me there was a tea party in Boston that was illegal too. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold. We shall seek to establish and maintain a dollar which will not change its purchasing and debt-paying power during the succeeding generation. As anguished shrieks rose up from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Government credit and government currency are really one and the same thing. A reserve of gold and a small reserve of silver. So why do central banks hold it? Well, it's, it's a form of reserves. So why don't they hold diamonds? Well, it's tradition, long-term <laughs> tradition. You know, some people still think it's money. Good morning. Welcome back to the Junius Maltby channel for an installment of today's gold news. Several articles out today that perked my interest and I thought it would be good to share here on the channel to generate some of the discussions we so much seem to enjoy here on the most boring channel on YouTube. Article number one coming to us with information from the U.S. Mint. And you're going to have to bear with me as I try to do some math. We're going to figure out some numbers here. Well, check this out. 2019 American Eagle half-ounce gold bullion coin mintage, the second lowest. Second lowest in history mint population for the half-ounce U.S. gold eagles. Now, there's really, in my opinion, only three things that could have caused that. One would be decreased demand, which we're going to look at articles following this that point to that not being the case, in my opinion. Number two would be gold shortage, inability to acquire the physical metal and the planckets to make the gold bullion. Number three would be the mint just not desiring to, uh, basically making the decision to not strike as many for whatever reason and not putting them out. And I don't think that's really the case. I think if anything, it's maybe due to a constriction in gold supply for them or, yeah, maybe it, I guess you could say poor planning on the mint's part to not meet demand. I do not truly know the causation for this, but let's take a look at the numbers because it does point to some interesting things about the amount of gold available in the form of U.S. gold eagles currently, especially for this year. Right off the bat, we see here in the headlines, if you scroll a slide over, that the 30,000 mintage for the 2019 American Eagle half ounce gold bullion, $25 coins, is the second lowest for the series. So we already see that there's only 30,000 of them. And we'll get to the math in a moment because I'm not that smart. I'm kidding, of course. We all know that equates to only 15,000 ounces. 15,000 ounces total, that's nothing. But again, we're gonna look at the other numbers here. The US Mint has exhausted its inventory of 2019 half ounce gold, $25 American Eagle bullion coins. The US Mint has already sold all of its 2019 American Eagle half ounce gold bullion coins, 30,000 pieces, the second lowest output in the 33 year history of the series. Gold bullion distributors were notified by US Mint memo November 1st that the Bureau's inventory of 2019 half ounce gold American Eagles was depleted. The lowest mintage for any American Eagle half ounce gold bullion coin is the 24,100 for the 1991 release. The highest American Eagle half ounce gold bullion mintage was 599,566 for the 1986 issue. The 2018 mintage was only 32,000 coins. So really last year they only made 16,000 ounces of worth of gold out of half ounce coins. I always try to think of it in full ounces just for whatever reason, it's peculiar I know. But again, only 32,000 last year, only 30,000 this year, so we're 2,000 uh, shy of last year. As of November 22nd, the U.S. Mint recorded sales of 106,000 of the American Eagle 1-ounce gold, $50 gold bullion coins. The lowest sales were 189,148 for 1996 coins. The 1999 coin sales were the highest, at one, essentially 1 1.5 million pieces. The 2018 mintage of one ounce gold was 191,000. So it looks like as of November 22nd, if they've only sold 106,000 American Eagles, again, that's before the holidays, will they 
even make it to that all-time low of 189. Uh, we might even see an all-time low in full ounce gold. But let's do the math here quickly because I'd like to see what the total mintage of U.S. gold in the form of gold eagles is for the year 2019. American Eagle quarter ounce gold bullion coin sales so far in 2019 have reached 36,000 coins. The lowest output for quarter ounce gold American Eagles was 36,100 for 1991 and the highest was 726,031 coins was for the inaugural 1986 release. 1986 was the big year. That's when they first came out with these all and just people went crazy buying up gold. Of course, it was a little bit cheaper then too. 2018's mintage was 62,000 coins. So last year, sitting at 62,000 and we're only at 36 now, I, I, I highly doubt we'll even reach last year's numbers for the quarter ounce bullion. American Eagle 10 ounce gold bullion sales for uh, dated 2019 have reached 190,000 coins compared to 230,000 in 2018. The lowest output of 10 ounce gold American Eagles was in 1988 and that was at 159,500 coins. Again, that's just the 10 ounce guys. The highest sales figure for the 10 ounce release is 2.75 million 1999. Remember those days? 1999 Browns down, gold was cheap. A 10th ounce gold coin was like 35 bucks, 30 bucks. It was unbelievable. And uh, of course, they were much cheaper then. <laughs> and people gobbled them up. All right, let's do some math here. So we've got 106,000 full ounces. That's, that's easy. That's 106,000 ounces. We've got 15,000 full ounces worth of the half ounce bullion coins only minted at the population of 30,000 that's easy 15,000 full ounces there and then when you do the math on the quarter ounces let's see carry the one uh, move this uh, cross that out minus bloom bam uh, 9,000 quarter ounces okay that's easy and then for the tenth ounces let's move that decimal place over can we do that yeah we can do that uh, 19,000 okay we got 19,000 tenth ounces we are at a total of 149,000 full ounces of gold. That's 149,000 ounces, respectively, for this year, 2019, out of the U.S. Mint. Now let's take a London Good Delivery Bar. 400 ounces, beautiful, fat, chunky London Good Delivery Bar. We'll divide that from the uh, 149,000 ounces here. Take away 400 ounces, boom. Okay, we got 372.5. So it looks like in order to make the gold that they did, this is just, yeah, I guess, kind of a fun fact. Not really that pertinent of information, but it is fun to look at and think of in that way. The U.S. Mint cranked out 372.5 worth of London Good Delivery Bars. That's how, how many are basically off the market, out of the vaults, circulating now in the population in the hands of people and investors and and elsewhere in the form of coinage so that's a that's a respectable amount of gold to be distributed amongst the people i like it i think it's a good thing now let's continue on because I'm scratching my head here looking at some other news and i'm wondering if they relate all right the perth mint november gold bullion sales are the highest in a year the mint's gold sales were the highest in a year, while its silver sales finished above 1 million ounces for a fourth month in a row after nine straight months of missing the mark. A million ounces of silver. And we look at, uh, you just look at that number compared to the U.S. mint in the Gold Eagle sales, really only striking 149,000 ounces total of gold. Again, showing just the amount of silver available by many of these mints when they can crank out numbers like 1 million ounces of silver. And that's just the Perth Mint alone. Nearly 10 times the amount of gold put out by the U.S. Mint this year. All right, taking a look at the Perth Mint bullion sales. Again, this is Troy ounces. I'm not going to do all the silver. I, I looked at the silver quickly. It's, a, it's about $12 million. 
they cranked out about 12 million ounces of silver. We're going to talk about that in a minute. I don't want to go too far down that path. But for gold, from November to November, 404,045 ounces. This is a pretty respectable number, especially when you look at the U.S. mint of, you know, 149,000 total ounces. Looking at gold from January to November, which is more in line with what the, the information we picked up from the U.S. Mint, we're looking at 310,551 ounces, troy ounces of gold. And that equates to around 776 London good delivery bars. 776 London good delivery bars. It's, uh, it comes out to about 776.37. And then when you look at the uh, U.S., again, that was only 400 good delivery bars. Now you add the, um, or sorry, 372. 372 gold delivery, uh, London good delivery bars. So let's add those two up just for just for the sake of discussion. Uh, I've got the calculator here. I've got 776.3775 plus 372.5 equals, we got 1,148 London good delivery bars off the market in the form of coinage minted. Now one thing that stood out to me just looking at the Perth Mint, I didn't look at the US Mint silver sales for this, but just looking, swinging over to the Perth Mint, when you look at those numbers again, um, just tremendous amount of, of silver cranked out by them and those beautiful kookaburras and all the other silver products that they have there. But uh, you look at the numbers, it's about, I mean it really comes in at almost 12 million or a little over 12 million ounces of silver that's staggering 12 million ounces and then when you when you uh divide their silver mintage population in ounces uh, with the, the gold total mintage uh, it came out to about 40 to 1 it was about 40 to 1 um, for every uh, ounce of silver the perth mint would put out uh, or sorry for every ounce of gold they would put out uh, they would put out approximately 40 ounces of silver. So again, just really showing, in my opinion, the, the scarcity of the gold in that regard as far as um, annual production and mintage by mints such as just the Perth Mint alone. All right, now we've got all the boring numbers out of the way. We've looked at some mint populations and uh, came up with some little tiny theories on what that could mean, what it could not mean, who knows, you know. Forget about it. Gold is going to $2,500 or $3,000 an ounce investment expert. And I've been seeing this kind of play out as a theme. It's been popping up in various news outlets, a lot of them quoting some of the same people. And you'll see Goldman Sachs mentioned uh, quite a few times. And there's uh, also some stuff that was on 24H Gold referencing predictions for gold going into the next year. All of them pretty much bullish you know i've, I've seen uh, a common theme again to refer to that word as, as a base for gold at around 1600 coming up here pretty soon so if that if that does become the new floor 1600 and we see it bouncing up into the 2000 range you know who knows the, these predictions happen all the time especially going into a new year you always have that new year's predictions coming out you know oh, this is what the year 2020 is going to do i don't put a whole lot of faith in any of it you know you get three economists in a room you have five opinions seven predictions etc just uh, there's so many variables so many variables that could play out um, ultimately i look at the the big picture the 65 to 70 centuries of value maintained and held by gold and that's what i base my gold acquisitions on i don't really look at the the year to year i don't really care what these little bipedal mammals that are scrabbling all over this blue sphere hurling through space. I don't really care what they're doing and what their decisions are. Uh, those in the halls of government, it, it's just, it just doesn't matter. You know, gold's going to outlast all of them and will maintain value through the entire, the entire span of human existence. And there's nothing they can do about it. So with that being said... You know, apologies for digressing. That's what we do here on the channel. We splinter off down these bizarre pathways. Let's take a look at this article. Wealthy people are stocking up on physical gold, as in bullion, coins, and bars, 
according to a recent note from Goldman Sachs. As a result, investors who are bullish on gold say it's the precious metal's moment to shine. I think gold's going to $2,500, $3,000 an ounce in the 2020s because the climate, the landscape for gold is hugely supportive. Sorry, I laughed at climate. I mean, anytime someone mentions climate right now, it just it just cracks me up. But well, so we'll read that part again. An ounce in the 2020s because the climate, the landscape for gold is hugely supportive. So again, he's not talking about the climate as in um, Greta Thunberg or climate change or any of that. That he's just saying that the environment, the uh, for precious metals, the economic environment, is very supportive for the metal. Paul Schatz, Heritage Capital President, told Yahoo Finances on the move. In a recent note, Goldman Sachs presented reasons for owning gold, citing recession concerns and political uncertainty as catalysts for an investor shift to gold. Over the past year, gold prices have risen nearly 20%, and gold is on pace for its best year in a decade. By 2020, Goldman thinks the price of gold will reach $1,600 an ounce. Schatz thinks Goldman's forecast is too low. I think Goldman is way off here, he said. 1600 is going to be a footnote. What's interesting in this cycle is that it's not just gold ETFs and other abstract investments driving demand for gold, but rather people buying actual gold bullion. Remember that. These people are buying actual physical gold bullion. Physical gold seems to be really in, and basically it sounds like rich people are hoarding physical gold. The bullion itself, said Yahoo Finance's Miles Udland, co-anchor of the final round and co-author of Morning Brief. In Goldman's view that squares with demand for vaults and everything, but I just think end-of-the-world trades are fun. And it seems like the global rich want the actual thing, he added. According to Schatz, an individual investor should have 5 to 10% in some capacity in precious metals. And remember earlier this year we read new estimates and recommendations from individuals like this, speaking about it as high as 30% or more, which I think a lot of these wealthy investors are leaning more towards that 20 to 30 percent. I know for myself, 5 to 10 percent, to me, it looks like a pittance. It's nothing. Even if you're an uber wealthy individual, having 5 percent of your wealth in gold is not that much. People who don't trust the markets, don't trust paper, will want to buy gold coins, anything that they're comfortable, he said. You want to buy gold stocks? Fine. You want to buy gold? or sorry, GLD, you want to buy the GLD, you know, the, the stock, fine. You want to buy some gold coins, fine. For people who don't want to store physical gold in the manner of bars and coins in their basement, gold ETFs are an alternative. Nah, if you don't own it, if you don't have it in physical possession, you don't own it, said Schatz. That's what I think anyway. He's telling people that ETFs are an alternative, and I never will agree that they are, ever. If you want to leverage play, you play the stock ETF, he added, highlighting it as a practical way to own gold. No, you're not, you don't own anything. You own paper, my friend. Paper. And another read here, similar topic. Goldman, wealthy investors are moving to safety of gold coins and bars and vaults globally. Wealthy and high net investors internationally are moving to the safety of physical gold bullion in secure vaults, according to Goldman Sachs. This is according to important data and a chart in the recent very important Goldman note to clients, which was not picked up on in the select media who covered it initially. Check out Exhibit 18. The implied build in non-transparent gold investment has been larger than the build in gold e ETFs here. Uh, you got the gold ETF cumulative change in that dark blue, and then in the light blue you see trade implied vaulted gold. That's a vaulted gold build there. This is uh, from Swiss Customs, UK Customs, Goldman Sachs Global Investment Research. Trade data implies that gold in storage has increased far more rapidly 
than is reflected by financial market instruments, indicating a widespread preference for physical gold instead of gold-linked financial assets. People want the physical, and just look at the divergence there of those two graphs. You can see physical gold, I mean, absolutely skyrocketing. It's, it's past the 1,500 ton range, and you've got the ETF cumulative range just it was bounced around. It was, it was negative for quite a long time there, uh, trending towards 2016. From about 2013 to 2016, just diving. And it was still negative in most of 2017 and most of 2018. And only in 2019 did it really peak above that and start to accumulate. So again, people want physical metal. And it really started dating back to about 2016, uh, them gobbling up tons of the physical. We covered the Goldman note as reported by Bloomberg on Monday and highlighted Goldman's very positive view towards gold over bonds and their forecast for $1,600 gold in 2020. A key point and important data and a chart in the note was not picked up by select media who covered it. It showed and was subsequently picked up on by Yahoo Finance that wealthy high net worth investors and possibly institutions besides central banks who are already the largest gold buyers this year, are moving to own physical gold in secure vaults globally. Please let that sink in, my friends, especially those of you who are skeptics and the naysayers, the doubters, the gold haters. Okay, I mean, you have to admit these things are happening. And uh, you haven't been right once with gold. To those who believe that it should have been five or $700 this year, it's, it's not there, and it's not going to go there. You're never going to see gold below 1000 again, ever. Owning non-ETF gold and non-bank physical gold coins and bars appears to be the increasingly preferred safe haven method to hedge against tail events by wealthy investors and the environment, the economic landscape, the world we live in is not improving. The debt's not going away. It's not going to get better. When you look at taxes, uh, the debt of nations, the economic and global instability, the geopolitical risks that are unfolding every single day, it's never going to improve. It's only worsening. That's the trend. It's the site. You've seen it. Uh, this will only further create more demand for gold. This is something that Goldcore, as a gold storage specialist, has been seeing much more of in 2019, with many wealthy investors moving from ETF gold and bank gold holdings, either safety deposit box of vaulted and online gold platforms, to the fully segregated, vaulted, and outright gold ownership of Goldcore Secure Storage. These people are demanding to have an absolute tie to physical metal with guaranteed real possession of a specific gold asset investment vehicle, such as a, a particular gold bar or certain gold coins in a vault with their name on it. According to Goldman Sachs, since the end of 2016, the implied build in non-transparent gold investment has been much larger than the build in visible gold ETFs. Oh, the anti-gold plebes are going to love this line. Goldman said the data is consistent with reports that demand for gold coins and gold bars stored in vaults is surging globally. Trade data implies that gold in storage has increased far more rapidly than is reflected by financial market instruments, indicating a widespread preference for physical gold instead of gold-linked financial assets. Political risks in our view, help explain this because if an individual is trying to minimize the risks of sanctions or wealth taxes, then buying physical gold bars and storing them in a vault where it is more difficult for governments to reach them makes sense. Finally, this build can also reflect hedges by global high net worth individuals against tail economic and political risk scenarios in which they do not want to have any financial entity intermediating their gold positions due to the counterparty credit risk involved. Goldman appeared to be warning of the risks in financial products such as gold exchange traded funds and commodities, gold ETFs and ETCs above. 
as the Yahoo Finance journalist Miles Odland wrote, This means that for those including gold in their end-of-the-world trade, owning gold bullion is a must. That's a pretty interesting article. I don't know. You guys bouncing that around in your noggins? I'd think about it. Some pretty pertinent information there. And I like it. I like to see this theme. I like to see the old, the uber wealthy, the high net worth individuals gobbling up gold. Hey, maybe maybe this coincides with the, uh, the Junius Maltby channel. Just kidding. I know none of them watch it. They probably don't even have YouTube. They don't even log on to it. But uh, it would be fun. It would be nice to know some big high net worth individuals staggered upon this channel one day and then allocated an exorbitant amount of wealth towards a couple of tons of gold and it impacted the gold price just from watching a video here. I doubt it, but it's fun to think about. All right, keep stacking. Do yourself a favor, gobble up some gold while it's sitting here now under $1,600 an ounce. Just buy it up. Get some silver while you're at it. Silver, uh, I believe it's, it's still sitting around that 16 range. I didn't even check this morning putting this video together even though the markets are closed. I honestly haven't even looked at the price of metals. It's just, again, I've reminded you guys that in the past, you know, when I've talked about it. The price of these metals really doesn't bother me. I don't even look at it when I go to buy it. I just, I say this is how much silver or this is how much gold I would like. And I lock in and I grab it then. And if it drops the next day, it doesn't phase me because I know the long term. That's how you have to look at it. I'm not a day trader. I don't buy metals to flip metals. And I know where this is all headed ultimately. And I just hope I can live to see the day when fiat empires crumble to the ground. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the Junius Maltby channel. As always, I appreciate those of you who take the time out of your day to spend a few moments here, watch these videos, to comment, to like them, hitting that thumbs up button. It actually means something to me. And those of you who share them to help the community grow, to help the channel get more reach, the videos get more reach. And to those of you who actually support the channel, you know who you are. Uh, I've received your donations in the past. It's most generous, it's most appreciated, and it keeps this channel motivated and alive. Thanks for being here for all 27 minutes and 30 seconds. Have a good rest of your day.